sounds like you can do the, all that too. Yeah. So I don't absolutely. need them both. <laughs> just, well, just admit it for me, Bert. No, no, admit it, hey, admit yo, it. Okay, James, you, you just nailed it right on the head. That's a huge difference between us. Hey, folks, welcome to another episode of the Ask James Why Show. Right now, uh, I'm on the line. You probably see him on the split screen there, man. This handsome gent is my dude, Burton. Burton is from a real estate software company called Property Stream, Prop Stream, right? Prop Stream. Now, these guys, they just reached out to me. Uh, they, they sent me a pretty gnarly care package, right? It's, uh, it's like a book bag, signage, a couple t shirts. You know, they got the XL so JYs could fit the beer belly in there. All that good jazz. I like all that. But uh, before I get like too excited uh, about this company, I wanted to have Burton on to, to walk me through like what's going on. Like I just briefly have looked at you guys' website and it, it looks like you're all about providing uh, investors with the real estate data. But other than that, bro, I don't really know too much about what you guys are doing. So before I like go full bore team prop stream, dude, can you like walk me and my audience through what we got going on? Yeah, most definitely. So thanks for having me first and foremost. But yeah, my name is Burton. Um, I'm probably the probably biggest nerd you'll probably meet when it comes to real estate data. For the last eight years, that's all I've been focusing in on is how do we collect this data that's scattered everywhere. And most of you guys probably are very aware of that. But put it into our system, not just to show you the data all in one place, but how you can manipulate that data. And that's the most important thing to me is uh, this is a very competitive market. And I think we need to start utilizing technology in our favor, right? We've watched enough sci-fi movies if you don't use technology into your own favor they're going to turn into terminators and come after us one day you know so <laughs> the idea today is i'm going to show you and james how to manipulate this data to find leads that you guys have never even seen before or heard before uh so thank you again for for the time and opportunity here today no problem and i if you don't mind brother i am just going to as you talk i want to just grill you with as many questions uh, that pop into my mind because I feel like these are questions that my folks are going to have. And then, of course, obviously, I'm a real estate investor myself, right? So I have questions. So the first thing is, uh, with what you said, right, you got all this real estate data, okay? Uh, my first thought, the first thing that popped into my brain is I am a licensed real estate broker, okay? I'm yeah. out in Cleveland. And the thing with licensed uh, real estate brokers, it's a very scattered uh, data driven business, right? Like what I mean by that folks is there's this thing called the MLS, right? That's where all the sound bitches get together. And we sell these motherfuckers to you guys, right? That's where we sell these properties. But here's the thing. There's no national MLS. There's no statewide MLS, right? So it's not even like there's 50 MLSs, right? We, they just broke up into these crazy little regions. Like, so my MLS that I am a member of, right? We have like 6,000 realtors and that's where all the properties in the greater Cleveland area are, are bought and sold, right? But that's the only MLS that I, uh, that I am a member of, right? So like, if I decided I wanna expand and I wanna start doing properties in Birmingham, Alabama or Kansas City, Missouri, uh, I'm shit out of luck when it comes to my MLS. Is like what you got going on here with PropStream, is that gonna kind of fill in that gap for people like me? I'll actually do both. Um, so if you did step out of your market where you don't have access to the MLS, we can definitely help you with that. Uh, because we have about 780 plus MLS boards under our umbrella, you're going to be able to use our MLS data to find on off market properties, or to even use that MLS data to run your comps. Now, as for your area, I, I, you mentioned you did have access to your MLS. Sure, you probably won't need to use our application to run comparables, but that doesn't mean our application can't help you uh, because our application collects off market. And well, essentially what we collect are the three major things, financial situational data. Uh, so it's financial data, situational data and property data. So yes, you do have MLS in your market, but I could still help you by finding a cash bought property that's off market because maybe that buyer needs to find an agent to list their property. I can help you find off market liens that probably need to list their property before they go into pre foreclosure. Uh, we could find you senior owners that are living in two story buildings and stuff like that. So um, yes, you do have MLS, but we for the last 15 years have been able to work with realtors in their market and when they step out of their market. Now again, in your market, you probably are just going to use your MLS to run your own comps because we're not a live feed. Our feed is usually 24 to 72 hours behind your actual MLS feed. But again, once you step into Miami or a different market, 
uh, you don't have the MLS unless you want to join that board and you know how pricey it can be. So we're able to at least uh, accommodate that situation. Okay. I want to digest and, and dig deeper on, on two avenues that you talked about, right? Uh, the first is you said you're getting, because you know, the, the MLS is scattered. So that's a great, like you said, you have 780 MLS feeds. You've aggregated the data from all 780 MLSs in the United States of America, right? That's how many most, there are. Most of them, yeah. yeah. There are a few out there that are, uh, we like to call them the mafia. They just don't want to give us their data. Okay. But we've been able to utilize uh, third party sources to still kind of work around. In those situations, just the, the turnaround is a little bit longer. When we're getting it, usually directly from the board, we're seeing a 24 to 72 hour turnaround, but in areas where the board doesn't want to give it to us, we still have a means of getting it. It just may take a little bit longer. So if a property was listed on Monday uh, in that market, we might not see it till about Thursday or Friday in our system, just as an FYI there. Okay. But for where you're getting the data, like the fastest, how soon are you getting it? We're seeing it anywhere between 24 to 48 hours. So okay. Yeah, so today's the 26th. We can go into many markets out there and see listings on the 24th, 23rd, and so forth. So Because here, here's what I run into a lot, right, with investors. Um, like, you know, uh, you, obviously you guys are familiar with the show. That's why you reached out to me. And you guys know that um, I'm a Cleveland boy, right? We're in Cleveland here. But, you know, I, I don't, I'm not like one of those homers that's like, man, Cleveland's the greatest fucking city in the world. Like, here's the deal. The majority of people that buy properties from Holton Wise and, and work with Holton Wise, like, they don't give two fucks about Cleveland. They don't fucking care about the Browns. They don't care about LeBron James, right? What they care about is cash flowing real estate, real estate that is has price to rent ratios that they can't get, right? Our biggest customer base, the most people, want, you know, the, all the eyeballs on this show right now, the majority of them eyeballs, bro, they're probably on the West Coast, okay? They're, they're West Coast investors, and they're attracted to Holton Wise because we've put together the full top-to-bottom turnkey solution to help them invest in these low-cost, high-cash-flow properties. So Cleveland is just like one of the many markets. Like if there is someone in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, or Indianapolis, uh, or Detroit, like to oh, most West Coast investors, if they have a team in place, it's, it's irrelevant to them which one of those markets the property uh, is in, right? Because look, I mean, again, guys, like people ask me like, yo, is, is Cleveland better than this market? Is Cleveland better than that market? You're splitting hairs, six to one, half dozen to the other, right? You're not going to like get super rich in Cleveland, but you'd go broke in Detroit, uh, even though obviously Detroit gets a super bad rap, guys. But like I'm talking like Metro Detroit, right? We have ghettos in Cleveland, too. So like if you're in the metro area, you do OK. Like it's, it's what you buy in the market is what I'm saying, guys. It's what you buy in these individual little Midwestern markets. So when you talk to me about this product, dude, the first thing I think of is I think a lot of my clients that Cleveland is just one piece to their portfolio puzzle. And like I have access as a broker in Cleveland, I have access to that Cleveland data for them, but I don't have access to everything else that's out there. Cause if I'm, you know, a West coast investor, dude, I want to build up my portfolio. And if I got three properties in Cleveland, two in Michigan, two in Indianapolis, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so for me, I, I like the idea of the, you guys have kind of like pushed all that data into one place so these guys can work their multiple markets all at once. Like we do a lot of business with a lot of the turnkey providers down there in Memphis, right? So I love the fact that we can put your Cleveland data right alongside your Memphis data. And that seems to be the problem you guys have solved, yes? Yeah, actually, we don't region lock anybody. So uh, because we know that virtual investing has become very big in the last few years, I located in Orange County, California, can search Memphis, Tennessee and start pulling leads and finding buyers in that market. Uh, so absolutely, it's um, not like any other product where we, yeah, you're only tied into your market. And if you wanna go in a different market, you gotta pay up. As a matter of fact, it's, it's a monthly base subscription. It's not region locked. And we give you 10,000 records every month to play with. So we hope that just one of those records should be life-changing at the end of the day. So yeah, absolutely. You can step in any market in the US. All right. Walk me through how this is different than like Zillow though, right? Zillow obviously aggregates data too. Tell me why, because Zillow's free to access, you're not. Why, what's the, give me the difference. So what separates us is that we pretty much get all of our data from a multitude of many sources out there. The thing that makes Zillow different is that, remember, their business is more of the business of 
you to go online and find something to buy, not necessarily something to, uh, that, well, they're, they're selling too, right? They're showing you properties that you can buy, but the consumer for Zillow is not an investor consumer. It's your general population who needs to now move into a new property, right? The thing that separates us is that we're strictly an investor tool. So whether you're a contractor, a lender, a realtor, a broker, you do fix and flips, you do wholesaling, lease options, subject twos, whatever seller creator financing strategy out there can be implemented with us. So what we do differently is that we don't pretty much do what they do, which is mostly doing MLS and just a few county records. We collect practically everything you can imagine on a property. So we're talking characteristics, tax information, HOA information, lien information, mortgage information, situational data. This is like pre foreclosures, auctions, divorce, bankruptcies. If it's a senior owner, if it's a failed listing, if it's a tax delinquent property. So all of that data is put together so you can view it when you're talking to the owner and talk with confidence. That's what separates us is that if I'm an investor and someone's calling me right now to sell their property, sure, I can go to Zillow, but they have limited of information. So I'm not able to talk with confidence on the tax information, talk with confidence on the lien that they have on their property, talk with confidence on the mortgage note that they have. Versus in PropStream, that's all there and designed for you to see it in an easy fashion. So when you're talking to Fred or Bill or whoever it may be, you're able to talk with confidence, no ums and ams and any of that. Another thing that separates us is that you can run comps on every individual property that we have using both public records or MLS records and then print that report. So what separates us again from them is that we are a very investor geared platform. So not only is it used for analyzing properties, finding the pain point, which is the opportunity, running comps, but then printing that report. And we still have other things where unlike Zillow, where you typically type in an address or choose from them, our system allows you to search anywhere in the United States and build a list of motivated sellers or buyers versus seeing what they have available and just going off what they have. So if one day you wanna to go to Memphis, Tennessee and just start looking for properties that have out-of-state owners with two mortgages, that's what you could do in PropStream versus Zillow in this case. Nice. So you kind of like satisfied a customer on two ends of an equation, right? Like you have, say I'm a guy and I'm in California and I was sent a deal in, uh, let's just say, Indianapolis by a wholesaler. And I think the deal looks good. I think it's got some teeth to it. But before I buy, I, of course, need to do my due diligence. So I am a California resident, so I am probably not a real estate agent in Indianapolis, so I don't have access to the MLS, but I have my access to PropStream, so I can go into PropStream, pull the comps on this property, and make sure that the wholesaler is not uh, yanking my chain on the value, yes? Absolutely. And prior to running comps, we're going to show you all the property information. So you'll be able to see the mortgage information, the equity, if there's any liens that are also needed to be taken care of. Um, so absolutely. Yeah, you can use our system to calculate your MAO or your maximum allowable offer and um, see if that wholesaler is taking you for a ride or not. And then to that same point, like I said, you, I think you solved two problems in that equation. Let's say same equation, same property, same group of people, Cal uh, California buyer. Uh, wholesaler in Indianapolis. Let's say in this situation, I am actually the wholesaler. Maybe I found access to that property because I use your tool to pull data uh, of sellers in various distressed situations. And then I did a direct mailing campaign and that's how I stay in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you guys literally jammed it all together. You took all them MLSs, you put them, them in one shopping cart, gave us the whole country. And then you're able to uh, help people on one side of the deal and on the other side of the deal. So we aggregated everything to one company, one simple company, and then we're helping end buyers, we're helping middlemen, we're helping you go direct to seller, we're helping you verify comps if you're the guy being marketed to, helping you do the marketing if you're, guy, you're the guy doing the marketing. Absolutely. It's pretty so much it's pretty the much whole a, thing. A, it's a two-part system, right? So you guys generation. swim for it all. You're like, you know, why Let's not? try to get some money. You're like, no, <laughs> fuck that. Let's get all the money. Let's get everybody. You named it. But yeah, that's the idea. Lead generation uh, with skip tracing, getting contact information and direct marketing, as well as property analyzing. Because when that lead does come back, we definitely want you to, to find the opportunities and run those comps as well. All right. Talk to me about, uh, there's this other company, right? Um, 
well, we don't really need to name drop them or whatever, but yeah, fuck it, we'll name drop them. There's companies like ListSource, okay, where, where people can buy lists, right? Um, and they buy that data so they can market to settlers, right? Uh, so explain to me why I don't need to utilize maybe a realtor contact I met for part of my data, a list source feed, and Zillow. Why, how can I like, can, so I can just like get rid of all three of those platforms and just go to you, yeah? Well, in truth be honest, I'm going to be the most honest person ever. I, you probably don't need to get rid of them. Sure, they can provide some sort of service at, at, for your real estate business in some manner. But to be frank with you, we, we buy the same data that ListSource buys. Uh, we have pretty much most of the data that Zillow has. The only thing that we don't have is we don't do FISBO, for sell by owner. So that's probably one advantageous advantage that uh, Z Zillow has. Uh, to be frank, it's a little complicated uh, when you have users going into the platform and doing their own listings. We just wanted to step away from that. But what makes us aggressive is we are a, uh, again, one of the largest repository of real estate data. We buy data from everybody, um, from, from list source, the same source that they're getting it from, um, some other major companies. I'm, I can't mention their names due to the NDA agreements that I have. But the idea is that we buy repetitive data. So that way we know for sure a property is in pre-foreclosure, right? So um, you, I don't want to say that you don't need them, but we are several pieces to the puzzle but here's the thing, for the last 15 years, we have gotten so many questions on, hey, what's the difference between you and them and them and you? Yeah. So what we did last year was we released this upgrade called List Automator, and it really shook the industry because we've got to remember from our business standpoint, it's our data versus their data versus their data. That's what the consumer is led to believe, right? That's why the consumer, in this case, James, you, you're like, okay, what's the difference between you and them? And, and we know that's always going to be a thing. That's never going to go away. So what we decided to do, which shook up the industry, is we introduced a feature called List Automator, which does one of two important things. So one important thing it does is it allows anybody to import outside data into our system and append our data on top of that. Right? So if you just prefer to go to ListSource, great, but guess what? ListSource may not have MLS data, which last time I checked, they do not. So you could build a list from ListSource, let's say a thousand results, and you don't know if any of them are on market or not. You can take those 1,000 results, put them into our list automator, and we'll tell you how many of them are on market, vacant, or all of our other data. So now you can make a more qualified decision, right? So that's why it shook the industry is because for the longest time, it's always been about hey, we're better than them and they're, and they're not as good as us. And the marketing tactic was fear and uncertainty and, and a little bit of ego. So that way you would lead into our direction. We've never been about that. We're not here to compete with them. We're here to help you out. If that means join them, bringing the data together, then let's be it. And that's what we decided to do. So whether this is an outside list like ListSource, whether it's a list from Zillow that you extracted, whether you went driving for dollars and wrote a bunch of properties on a piece of paper, all three of those elements can be imported into our system and we're just going to give you our data and then you can take it from there. So I could, if I like using those, I could use them alongside you, but do I have the ability if I did want to, am I able to go in and build lists that I could then print generate and do my direct mailing? Cause I mean, that's, that's the bee's knees when it comes to. You can do all of that actually okay. in our platform. Yeah. And that's where the so 10,000 leads I, come into play. You can I think you're too, market. you're too modest, bro. You're too modest, man. If hey, I, man I, hey, I'd be savage. I'm, I'm like, screw this source. I would you don't love need them. To. I would love to, but you know, the reality is, you know, we, we weren't big. We weren't where we were at, you know, many years ago, you know, we were the new kids on the block. Um, we could have taken that route, you know, try to chime after the, the bigger guys, but that's right. never been our approach. And so, yeah, we've taken a more modest approach. And to be frank, most of our marketing, we, we don't even have a marketing. We, we just throw it all back into R and D and the development of our software and the development of our team. Okay. Uh, but you'll see what I mean in a few moments, you'll hopefully be able to see, you know, why we've invested so much in our product and not into those other tactics. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying like an attack campaign or anything, <laughs> although sometimes those are cool. But like what I'm saying, I, it, it seems to me like if I could pay list source, you know, on a per list basis or whatever their their uh, structure is or a company similar, right? There, there's others and guys. I don't have anything against this source. No issues there, right? I'm not saying they're a bad company either. I'm just saying, like, if I could pay company A and then 
get some stuff from you on top of company A. I'm now paying company A and company B, but it looks like I ha also have the option to eliminate one of those companies and go with just one company, one person to pay, which, you know, less passwords, less usernames, less, less uh, ACH deposits coming out of my account. So like, I get it. You're a super modest dude, but like, my, you know, the people that watch my show, I, I know because these guys, they no, grind, man, I mean, they grind I really at us that. on every property management. Well, here's another world, thing. So they're trying <laughs> well, to lower their costs and increase their ROI. So, you know, if they could pay one bill versus two bills, I think they would like that. And I, I think the main value of like a list source type company, and again, list source, please, if you guys like watch this show and you're mad at me. Like, you don't have to send cease and desist. We don't have to get into, like, a whole thing. You guys are great. I'm just talking to my man here. I'm just saying, like, you know, it's great if uh, what they do, but they really, they provide investors who want to reach directly to the seller the opportunity to target the seller they want and generate a list. And then when they generate that list, the sell, you know, the guys that targeted those sellers, they want to direct mail them because even though we're in the age of freaking YouTube and Twitter and this or that, the majority of my money that I make as an investor, it's through the freaking U.S. post office, dude. It's snail mail. That's where the sellers are, right? Like, I, you know, we do the show. We have the trucks. We have everything. But, like, it's just crazy. It's old school. It's like a freaking phone on the wall with a cord. But for whatever reason, sellers, they respond the best to that physical piece of paper mailed to them. And that, that's what those companies do, right? They allow you to target the sellers you want to get in front of, put that mail in their hand. Sounds like you can do the, all that too. Yeah, so I don't absolutely. need them both. <laughs> just, well, just admit it for me, Bert. No, no, admit hey, it, yo, admit it. Okay, James, you, you just nailed it right on the head. That's a huge difference between us. Again, with list source, they're just giving you the data and then see you later, you're on your own. With us, we got you covered for most aspects. We're going to give you the data, which you get to build on your own. You get to skip trace that data for a small additional cost, get their phone numbers and emails. So you can get an answer today instead of next week. Or you can even do direct mail in our system. So hold, you can on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, we, you can't just gloss over that. We could do the skip tracing through your platform too? Yes, sir. And you get results in about 15 minutes or less. Same day results. All right. So, so I could build a list, right? Let's say I build a list. Let's easy math, 1,000 thousand people on it. I could then, through your software, also pay to skip trace them, get their phone numbers. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Just so everybody is out there, if you're watching the show for like the first time or you're thinking about getting into real estate, starting investing in wholesale, whatever you're trying to do, I'm going to be honest with you. Cold calling is uh, it's tough. It's a tough game. Uh, you have to have a certain uh, level of sales ability, number one. Number two, you have to have fucking nuts of steel, okay? <laughs> Uh, if you're doing cold calling and you talk to 100 people and maybe 95 of them tell you to fuck yourself, uh, but five of them are lukewarm interested in what you're talking about, you're actually very good, okay? So you guys have to understand that. When you do the cold calling, uh, it's, it's a lot of fuck you, okay? You're going to get that. I get it all the time. My team, well, you know, uh, my team, they do the cold calling for me now, but like, you know, I started out doing the cold calling myself, right? So you guys are going to get a lot of that, so don't watch this episode and just immediately be like, click on the thing to, to buy the, pro the product because you're going to get super rich. Cause like all thousands of these people are gonna be like, Oh my God, thank you for calling me. I was waiting for somebody like you to call me <laughs> and offer me 70 cents on the dollar for my house. This is so great. Like, I love you. Right. It's that, that's not real world. Okay. If y'all want some stuff like that, there's a whole bunch of other guru channels y'all could watch, but this is Holton Wise TV. We cut it to you straight. We got the tennis from hell show. So um, be real with you. You're going to get kicked in the dick quite a bit when you're doing this cold <laughs> call. But, uh, you know, those, those five out of 100 that don't fucking hate you guys, that's where we make our bread. That's where we make our money. So direct mail is one aspect, following up with the calling. That's the other. So I could do the calling. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, um, and I, I love that you said that because you're right. You're probably going to get a lot of FU. So, hey, you know what? Another aspect of our system that's there that we didn't even mention out. Not only can you build your list and get their contact information in 15 minutes or less, but our marketing section does have the direct mail. So you have postcards that you can send. It also has ringless voicemail. So if you don't want to talk to people, why don't you just make a message and deliver it to all 1,000 leads right then and there? Um, so we have mail, postcards that you can send out. We have ringless voicemails and email marketing as well. So you can do any of those three components or do all three of them and increase the chances of actually getting a lead to call you back.
Yeah, you should actually do uh, those three at least twice and then something else too. Because the other thing too, guys, uh, real estate, like real estate sales is really no different than any other type of sales. Like a secret in sales uh, is you got to touch somebody seven times. It's, it's usually seven times you need to touch somebody, get in front of somebody to get them to actually want to make a deal, right? So if you're doing- well, We're not really physically touching these people though, right, James? Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Just- <Pass. laughs> I mean, it depends. I mean, you know, we can go, we can go several different ways with this, but <laughs> hey, you, you even get the oldest, sell me your house. <laughs> anyway, but look, you got to get in from like sometimes like you hit them with the direct mail. You might have to hit them with like two or three pieces of mail. You might have to hit them with a couple calls, uh, your automated call, then like some of the lukewarm people filter them down, like filter it down in your funnel. But that's the whole thing, right? Like when everybody's like, Hey, you could do wholesaling or you could do this or you could do that. Nobody ever tells anybody that's thinking about joining their their education program or reading their book or this or that they, they always leave out like just how much in the sales industry is your ability to like take the word no and your follow-up because like that's the other thing too right like you're selling this data right uh it's cool you've done a very good job of aggregating the data and i think you've done a very good job making the data easily accessible but uh, as a data company your goal is to get this data in front of as many investors as humanly possible so guys, uh, my dude Burton, he loves y'all, but he wants all y'all's money. We already discussed this. He wants all the pieces of the pie, right? He's trying to get his little sliver on all these transactions. So he wants this list, this data in front of as many investors as possible, right? So know that you're not the only fish swimming in the water, number one. Number two, you know, there's only so many cool ways you can tell a motivated seller hey, dog, I want to buy your house, right? There's only so many ways. Like, there's no fancy words you can put on there. Like, your letter's only so big, and you can't write a really long letter because ain't nobody going to read that shit. Uh, so there's you, you got you got to get in front of these people, but other people are getting in front of them. So we're really, like, where the, 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 the pros, you know, separate themselves from the pack. I know I'm kind of rambling here, but the pros separate themselves by the consistent follow-up, and they're going at it over and over and over again. So, you know, Burton's got the easy switch for some of this stuff. But remember, he's trying to give that easy switch to a lot of people. So if you guys really want to do this, you really want to be successful, don't think you could go in, have the thing for like a month, get one list, make a thousand calls, get told to fuck yourself 995 times, and now you're a fancy real estate investor. It's, it's not that easy. There's going to be uh, a lot of that stuff, you know, you got to do it over and over and over. And then those same five people uh, or, you know, what, however many people it are, right? That small percentage of people that, you know, are pretty interested in you, you may need to go back and, and get them another piece of mail or another phone call or one of those automated calls he's talking about. Or maybe you need to have when you're building up your portfolio in that city, right? You got to have your sign on every one of your properties. That's one of the biggest things we do at Holton Wise, right? We got thousands of properties in the neighborhoods and every single property has the Holton Wise logo, the Holton Wise contact info. We buy houses on every one of these things. Every truck we have in our company, right? We got a, a fleet of 60 vehicles. They all are driving billboards, right? It's over and over and over. Nobody like sees the Holton Wise name one time and it's like, Oh my God, that's etched into my brain for the rest of my life. I know six years from now when I want to sell my house to call them, right? Like guys, you know who still advertises, who still spends the most money advertising? Coke and Pepsi. If you don't know who Coke and Pepsi are yet, like come on, right? Fucking milk advertises, guys. Milk, got milk. It's fucking milk, motherfuckers. You don't have any other option when you're eating your cereal. It's milk or bust, but they still advertise, top of mind, right? So- I just want to make sure I get that out there because I don't, you know, I don't want to be one of those shows, Burton, where it's like, hey, guys, you can buy this product and now you're rich. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I hear you, man. And I see it far too frequently. Um, there's a lot of people that have just a ridiculous set of ex- expectations. And right. so I, I, I respect and I give you kudos for, for just saying that, you know, actually painting the picture correctly. Um, so thank you for doing that, man. That means yeah, a lot. I mean, that's what it's about, right? Like you're making... You're, you're providing tools, right? You're giving people tools to put in their tool belt, but they still need to know how to utilize the tools, right? A drill is a great tool unless you need a hammer and a nail. Exactly right. <laughs> All right. Lenders, our investors are looking to work with you. Send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com to be part of our referral network. All right, Burton. 
this is cool, man. I, I dig it. I dig it thus far. Uh, I like that uh, you're pretty transparent about the whole thing, right? Um, let's actually put this thing on the TV for these guys. So let's actually check it out. Like it sounds great, but let's let's, let's make sure it's user friendly and whatnot. So uh, I'm gonna log in. I got the login right here. I have not done any of these searches yet. So let's do Cleveland, right? Since I'm familiar yeah. with Cleveland, and if your data is bunk. Uh, I'll call you out on it right now, uh, out live on so. the show. So I can, I can make sure that you're giving us good stuff. So like, yeah. I got the so, country up. What can I do? What do I do? I want to give me, so, like, let's say I want to build a, a sweet list or something for Cleveland. That, let's do it. So right now, when you first log in, we're going to um, take you to the search page. The assumption is you're building a list or searching an address. So in this sense, at the very top of this page, you'll see our search bar. Yeah. Go ahead and type in the city Cleveland or the county that Cleveland is in. All right, so we're going to do my favorite neighborhood. Y'all that watch the show all the time, you guys know I love the old Brooklyn neighborhood. So that's Cleveland, Ohio, and the zip code's 44109. So should I type in Cleveland 44109, just punch in the zip? What do you want me to do? Just punch in the zip code, and then when you punch in the zip code, you should see a drop down right below up here. Click on oh. that little recommendation. All right, cool. 44109, Ohio, cool. All right, so Boom. I got 130 MLS deals, and that's the direct MLS data. All right. Now there's 116 pre foreclosures. So that, so the folks, so, you, know, you get the, the MLS real time MLS feeds from me for Cleveland only, right? Cleveland only guys. So I can't help you with data outside of Cleveland market, but for my Cleveland people, the data that I give you is the 130. But in addition to that, these 116 foreclosures, pre foreclosures, this is non MLS stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay. Walk me through exactly what a pre foreclosure is. So a pre-foreclosure is someone who's potentially defaulted on their note, right? This could be uh, they defaulted on a mortgage note. Uh, it could also be maybe a lien was placed on a property, like a property tax lien that they didn't pay. And inevitably that lien wasn't uh, caused the, the foreclosure of the property. But a pre-foreclosure is the, uh, the window of uh, the process of foreclosure. Foreclosure is when a bank takes full possession of it. And that's what you would see at the top where it says bank owned. So that box or the properties that the lenders have taken a pre foreclosure is that six month, sometimes two month time frame uh, between ownership and you're about to lose your home to the lender. Uh, so this is one of the most sought off categories out there. Uh, typically, depending on the state, it's either judicial or non judicial. So when a person's in a pre foreclosure, it will go either straight to the county as a notice of default, and then the county will put an auction date on it. And that's what we call a notice of trustee sale. If it's a judicial state, then what happens is it goes into the courthouse. It becomes a notice of less pendants. The court decides whether they proceed with the foreclosure, and then the court puts an auction date on that. So that pre-foreclosure box, depending on the state, will show you notice of defaults, notices of less pendants, and notices of trustee sales as well. As you mentioned, these are all off-market MLS data right here. Okay, and I would assume if they can't pay their mortgage, they're probably a motivated seller. Now, you have this data for pretty much everywhere, right? With, you know, the whole country, you're going and where are you individually getting this data? Like, where are you, like, you're aggregating all of this. Like, where is like the original source of this data? Well, like the for the pre foreclosure specifically. It's county records. Uh, so we built relationships with the county. Um, but initially what we're doing is we're taking the county records and then we're putting that county record, which is just saying, hey, it's in pre foreclosure and connecting it, it's almost like a, like connects the old like Lego stuff, but sure. it's just taking that record and then put plopping it on top of the property characteristics that we have, the mortgage information that we have. So our data doesn't come from one source. It doesn't come from Amazon to say the least. It's scattered. It comes from the brokers, MLS boards, the county records, the tax records, the lien holders, the court records, and it's just kind of all pieced together at once. Okay. And uh, guys, I'm going to help you all out here. I know some of you that watch my show are real cheap sons of bitches. So I'll let you know. Uh, if you guys want to cut Burton out of the equation on this to get that data, he's got data, uh, you know, there's, he's, got, he's in 780 MLSs. Usually the MLSs have around like 50 counties. So like I think that's roughly 39,000 counties. So if you guys do want to cut them out, uh, you could individually go to all 39,000 counties yourself and get the data, or I guess you just have to pay the man. Uh, I think paying the man might be the way to work it. Okay. So that's pretty cool, dude. I like the MLS. I really like the pre-foreclosure. 
Uh, what's this next one? Auctions. That's where it's already at the auction. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Then following that would be uh, bank owner foreclosures. And then following that would be non-owner occupied cash transactions. So this would be the first list you can utilize to find an investor to give your contract to. So not only are we a system for building motivated sellers, but in this case, you can find motivated buyers as well. Okay. Uh, but so to clarify though, this 3,246 cash buyers, that means every one of these is a piece where somebody bought the home totally cash uh, and it's a non-owner occupied property. Exactly. Yeah. So there are more cash transactions, but we took out all the owner occupied cash transactions. So that 3,200 that you see there are all cash transactions. Those are all the properties that were bought during that transaction. And these are all non-owner occupied buyers. Cool. Now, folks, uh, I don't want to give away the farm on like how I make all my money. Um, but if you watch the Tenants from Hell show, you would imagine that there will be landlords who are tired of being landlords for reasons you see on the Tenants from Hell show. All 3,246 of these, uh, these particular hits are landlords. Okay. There's going to be a good chunk of them guys that are upset. And the cool thing is this 300, 3,246 landlords, this is 3,246 landlords who have yet to join the other 130 who've already listed the property. So if you're really going after off-market sales, uh, this right here is a very, very valuable uh, piece of data. You're the man, Burton. <laughs> right. Definitely. What about here? Liens, the 125 so these are liens. All involuntary liens. So for those who are very familiar, voluntary liens are your mortgages and your equity lines of credit, things that you volunteer for. These are all the involuntary things like uh, you didn't pay your federal taxes, you didn't pay your state taxes, property taxes, you didn't pay your HOA, you didn't pay your utility, you didn't pay your mechanical or your contractor, what we call a mechanical lien. Uh, you didn't pay child support, you're on there, um, or you're being sued by someone called an abstract of judgment. So that category are all the involuntary liens. I like to call this the, the smoke that turns into a fire, right? I, I know that if we're all investors and we're all technically fire, firemen and firewomen, we're looking to put out the fire. That's what we get paid for. But the liens are the things that haven't turned into fire yet, right? Because we know that if you don't take care of a lien, it can cause a pre-foreclosure. So this section are all the involuntary liens. Some of them are in pre-foreclosure and then a majority of them are not in pre-foreclosure yet. So this could be a very lucrative list. Well, you'd also, that... you'd also run into the folks who don't actually have a mortgage on the property, but then they defaulted on their taxes, which could actually turn out to be a more profitable list for you because sometimes guys, uh, when you hit somebody who's missed a few mortgage payments, that's great. But if the market dipped and they owe 70 on their house, uh, but the house, the value is only 50 and then you have to pick it up a low value. It's hard to squeeze out a deal there, right? But if yeah. there's no mortgage and they're just like down $10,000 in taxes, you could squeeze out a deal that you couldn't otherwise. So that, that this is a valuable list. Big, uh, big. And it's about the, the same one, size as the pre-foreclosure list as well. The, the next one right after it would be vacant. Now, here's probably the one thing I will share with you guys. When I say vacant, everybody's thinking, oh, abandoned house, boarded up windows. That is not the case when it comes to data. The vacant category there is from the United States Postal Service and their definition of vacant is simply an address that's been flagged as undeliverable by mail. So here's just my tip. Whether you're using ProOption or any other platform out there, when you're looking at the vacant listing, remember that it's an undeliverable by mail list and it could mean three things. It could mean someone that recently sold their property. And that's why if you look at number one right there, you'll see the sell date is very recent. Why is it vacant? Well, let's say James sold me his house. I haven't moved in yet, but James forgot to forward his mail. The mail carrier is going to still go to James's old house and try to deliver his mail. And then eventually after two weeks, they're going to say, okay, well, this property is undeliverable by mail. It'll be flagged. That's why you see recently sold listings in here. You're also going to see properties in between tenants. So if James was renting out his house to me and my lease is up and I move out, but I forget to forward my mail from James's apartment or uh, rental property, then James's rental property is now flagged as vacant, even though James is still owning it, right? And then the third reason it could be in here is it's a, actually a vacant property. It's owner occupied for several years and they just haven't been answering their mail. So vacant, remember, undeliverable by mail, three categories, recently sold, in between tenants, and actually abandoned properties. Now, how do you filter through that? 
I'll show you in a little bit through our filtering area, but definitely going to want to use like years of ownership, uh, owner occupied or not owner occupied to shape that category. Well, I'll tell you what, let's filter it right now, brother, if you don't mind while we're yeah, on the topic. Don't. All right, so, well, walk um, me through it. Yeah. So to the right of the search bar at the top, there's a filter button. So go okay. ahead and click on that. Yep. And what you're going to see now is our comprehensive filtering system. Now, to the right, top right, you're going to see a drop down menu that says quick list choices. Go ahead and click on that. All right. And what you're going to see are the first eight categories we just went through, but there's actually 10 more. We have free and clear. We have, um, well, actually, I'm now just slipping my head. So let me go through all the categories here with you. So we have free and clear. We have bankruptcy records as well, divorce records, tax delinquent records, flippers, which is essentially our own list. What we did is we found any property that was bought and back on the market in two years or less. So it's kind of like a cash buyer's list, but a little bit more aggressive. Okay. We also have failed listings, properties that changed their mind or expired on the market. We have senior owners, anybody that has 25 years of ownership or a tax exemption senior ownership or senior citizen tax exemption or reverse mortgage. We have vacant land. That's essentially us cleaning up the county's data. We went through the county's vacant land data and we realized a lot of them weren't updating their records. They still had like property characteristics on top of the so-called vacant land category. So our team went through all their vacant land data and removed all the property characteristics. So when you click on our vacant land, you're just seeing a vacant land. Tired landlords, these are non-owner occupied properties with 15 years of ownership or more. And finally, zombie properties. These are properties in pre-foreclosure and vacant at the same time. So what, what James is doing here, guys, is that he's just searching a zip code. And then now he can go into our filter and choose any of these categories. Now, in this case example, we're going to be choosing lean. So go ahead and choose on that, James. All right. <clears throat> and once you choose leans, we could stop right there. I mean, it's all about, you know, your deep, do you have deep pockets to market to those remaining categories right there? Or if not, you're going to want to use our additional criteria just to the left of that drop down menu. So to the left of it, you're going to see owner occupied. So you get to now create your own story. Now, if you're, if you're going to deal with the lien, do you want the owner occupying the property? You can say yes. Or if you want a non-owner occupied or AKA an absentee owner, you would do owner occupied. No. Or if you, you don't, want to go, yeah. no, we go and no, let's go. No, definitely. I think we should go. No, I make, I make more money targeting uh, non-owner occupied properties than owner Perfect. occupied properties. Absolutely. Right. So the next thing now is occupancy status. This is whether they're answering their mail or not. So since we're dealing with a non-owner occupied property, this is most likely a rental property. So now the question is, do we want someone there? So if we want to deal with the tenant, then we would be uh, occupied in that second filter, right? So we want a non-owner occupied property, but it's occupied with a tenant. We don't want to deal with any tenants. It'd be non-owner occupied and vacant. That way we know we're dealing with someone who's not living in their occupied or own property and it's not currently uh, rented right now because it's in between tenants. All right. All right. Which one you want to, uh, which one you want to do? I feel like you'd be more tired if you don't got a tenant in there. But Hey, you know what? I think that's a good idea. Let's do no tenants here. But, All right. Uh, as you know, so here's what we got to be very careful on, right? When you're manipulating data, you are definitely manipulating the list. So right here, because we're being very specific, we're saying liens, not owner occupied and not vacant. How many results do we have now, James? Yeah, I punched it down to two, which is exactly. yeah, it's fairly small. So, so. You, you can get very specific, which our system allows you to do, but it's something I don't encourage you guys to do too much uh, unless you know exactly what you're looking for. This is why we give you 10,000 leads. It's a, a game of numbers, right? So yeah. if in this case, James, if I was in, in your market and I only got two records, I know for a fact, two properties, uh, two leads aren't going to pay the bill. So I would probably tone down my filters. I would probably, instead of doing non-owner occupied and vacant, I would probably do vacant and occupied right now. And I think that would be an important one because uh, President-elect Joe Biden just signed an executive order to extend evictions. So properties with liens and vacant or not vacant could both be a lead for us. I agree. I think we should actually do any then switch. That'll punch us up to 19. Oh, Which, okay. Yeah. Uh, we can do that for owner occupied too. We can again do owner occupied or non owner occupied. I think we go, if we're at non owner occupied, then any that takes us to 19 leads. But you know what I want to do, folks, too? Uh, here's one thing, right? I think we're even making this 
like showing you guys like a more narrow view here because I targeted one specific neighborhood of Cleveland that I really like. It's old Brooklyn, but you guys who watch the show, you know, you read the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, dude. That's like one of like, I don't know, 25 zip codes in Cleveland that I hit. So real quick, I'm going to just pop this back out to Cleveland because you guys, you guys look up the data on your your cities that you're looking at and you know like cleveland's got a population the actual city of cleveland is like 382,000. so let's see what amount of data we can go through when we're actually opening up to that whole city of cleveland because i feel like we're not giving you guys the clearest picture if i narrow it down that much so let's go back to cleveland and then we were Um, in the leans right brother yeah, we are. So if we go back to filters, I think it should still be there lingering. Yep. Um, oh, cool. Okay. Right. Owner occupied. Let's go back to no, because we want to focus on our, our, our tired landlords. Then we left it open to any. So now guys, that list, there was only 19 properties, right? Like here's the deal. Yeah, that's super targeted. But there's the other thing. You do have to have a level of volume if you're going to be trying to make money in this game. Like if you guys are mailing out 19 letters at a time, like y'all ain't going to be able to quit your jobs or, or leave that business, right? You got you to gotta go big. So if we busted out to the whole city of Cleveland, now we're working with 210 highly targeted properties. Now I think we can actually get some momentum. Right. Absolutely. Cool. And remember, liens is just one of uh, 18 categories. I mean, if we, let's say, instead of chosen liens, let's say we chose vacant. I mean, now we're probably in the thousands instead of the 200 or any of it. Let's choose senior owners. That could be a good list too. But you can see each category will reflect a different amount. So, hey, there are going to be categories where you, let's say you choose bankruptcy and we only have a hundred, but then you choose liens and there's 5,000. Yeah. Right? You guys get 10,000 every month. So don't just stick with one category is my point. <laughs> yeah. That 210, right? The 210. That was non-owner occupied property. So that was landlord properties, guys, with liens on it. There's 200 landlords in Cleveland right now as Burton and I filmed this video uh, that were not able to pay some type of lien. If we bust that out to just how many uh, vacant vacant, uh, non-owner occupied properties we can pull right now, I just clicked on that. And as you see, we're up to 10,000 right? 10,441. So we could bust it out. I just want to real quick, I'm going to check out this zombie properties. That's some bad motherfucking shit right there. What we got here. So what that does is again, it cross references our pre foreclosure and vacant records together. So what you probably want to do after you choose zombie properties, make sure that owner occupied and occupancy are both under any. Okay. Because it's, it's, it's implementing that for you. So what I would probably do is hit the reset button, search the city, and then hit zombie properties. But no, it's not, it's not a large list. Again, what this list is representing is someone that's in pre-foreclosure and on the vacant list at the same time. So this isn't something that's a big, big, big list. The reason why we isolated this list is because, look, as real estate investors, when someone's in pre-foreclosure, I'm sure you know what options you can provide to get them out of that. Remember, the homeowner doesn't know what you know. And so what what happens a lot is when a homeowner gets a notice of default, some of them know, okay, we have six months to get out of this. Some of them don't know that. What happens is they get that notice of default and see you later. They move into a relative, they move out of state, or in most cases, they move out of country. So this list, zombie properties is again, people are in pre-foreclosure and they've been flagged as vacant. It's a very challenging list but if you can get hold of them, aka maybe skip trace and call somebody, um, you might be able to expose them to an avenue that they didn't know about, like that cash offer or a sale, seller creative financing strategy to turn them from distressed homeowner who's about to lose their home and destroy their credit to uh, a potential landlord or someone that now paid off a mortgage and they have the best credit score ever. And it's, it's a, but the cool thing is too, with that, like they're about to lose the home, hurt their credit. It's a home they probably are more likely than not to not be living in guys. So they're not going to be emotionally attached to that home. Number one, number two, you don't have to find them a place to sleep. And the list is actually uh, not that small. My dude, Burton, super modest guy uh, right on cue. That list is actually pretty sizable guys, 550 properties uh, for how well we narrowed that down. And just uh, briefly, brother, if they wanted to mail these folks, right, guys, it's 550 letters, uh, your cost to mail after you factor in, like, actually the letter and mailing it out, you're looking at, like, 80 cents to a dollar per letter. So that's 550 bucks. How much would it be also if they wanted to uh, go through you, skip trace these folks and get these phone numbers, too? What would so they be looking at there? That, let's just round out. Let's say it's 500. Okay. Skip tracing is 12 cents. 
Um, so we're looking at $60, but it's 12 cents if it gets results. So let's say we skip trace the 500, but we only got 475 contact information, right? So out of 25 addresses, didn't come back with anything. Then it would be 475 times the 12 cents. That's $57. We just saved you $3 there. Now, as for postcards, that level uh, 500, I believe is 44 cents and that includes postage. So 500 at 44 cents. Oh, so they cents. can do the postcards through you too. Yes, they can. Oh, yeah, so you is. actually, you could, you'll actually remove their need to actually, so like they can, if they want, print their list and do it at their house or wherever they're at, or they could get the list, not physically print anything, not touch anything, not lick any envelopes and just pay you. And obviously you're a big company. So you've probably, you got a, I would assume some massive operation where you've scaled it out and you've lowered that cost down to 44 cents. Absolutely. And it's, it's pre-printed with their contact info. Yes, correct. And we sell it, uh, we send it directly to the mailing address, not the property address. This is the key component because when you're dealing with like non-owner occupied properties, we want to send something to the tenant. We want to send something to where they're getting their tax bill. So it sends to the mailing address. You have like over four dozen templates that you can choose from. Your contact information will automatically be applied and the homeowner's contact information. So the postcard will say, hey, John, I'm interested in your property on this street. So it's going to be very personalized and it's tiered price. So as, as high as 48 cents, if you do one postcard, as low as, uh, let me just double check here. I believe it was like 40 odd cents here, as low as 40 cents. Yeah, so one postcard, 48 cents, that includes postage. If you do 5,000 or more, 40 cents each with postage. And then we have tiers in between like that 500 amount we're looking at, that would fall in our third tier of 44 cents each per postcard. And again, that includes postage. That's that. Uh... That's pretty impressive, bro. I didn't even like when I was going through this, like briefly, I didn't want to look into your site too much before I had you on. Uh, Cause I wanted to experience it with my audience. Uh, and I was thinking like data aggregation, you're kind of like, we could eliminate the Zillows. We could get all the MLS data as one, but now with the listing, it's kind of like with the list printing of the list, it's cool. We could take like a company, like a list source and we could kind of, you know, you don't need them along with multiple subscriptions to other MLSs and your Zillow. So it's kind of like you took Zillow, combined it with MLSs and a company like ListSource. But now it looks like you've also, which I wasn't expecting, uh, have taken on the role of like a yellow letter type company and you've kind of done it all. So like you're really like turning these folks into like you're really filling up their tool belt. Obviously, they still need to learn how to use those tools, but you have gone and made it pretty freaking easy. Uh, that's, that's not bad. I don't want all you bastards out there buying all this crap and like marking up on my territory, y'all. So, yo, I like that. But hey, James, y'all need to me, use this nationwide. Don't be coming on my you, territory. Uh, my budget's still bigger. <laughs> let, let me show you something really cool that we, we figured out many years ago. So, many, many years ago, I mean, we look at our data, we look at and research our, our users. And we discovered something that uh, I coined traditional searching, right? And many of us okay. have, are still doing it to this very day. We don't even realize it. The reason I call it traditional searching is let's strip out these videos. Let's strip out the technology. What were investors doing many years ago? They would go to Cleveland, Ohio, and they would go directly to a source like the county's office and pull a list from them, like a pre-foreclosure list or a high equity list or cash fires list, and then work from that. Now, as you can see, we just did that, right? You and I went into Cleveland, Ohio, and we chose one of our 18 categories to start from. In this case, we started with the uh, zombie properties. And as you can see, there's additional filters, so you can stack and add other categories. But what our system has allowed you to do is no longer choose a list. So let's build a problem. And this is something that I've been campaigning with. And this is something I really hope you guys take away from today is that you guys are problem solvers. I know you guys like to call yourself real estate investors, but you guys are really real, real estate problem solvers, right? I think what happened is that we got kind of stagnant and we started focusing on pulling from a list, not building problems. So here's what I mean by, I want you guys to start building problems. James, go ahead and hit clear all next to the filter at the top. Okay. Then, uh, uh, you might need to step out of the filter and then just okay. to the right Close, of that. Close, clear all. I got you. you okay. Go. All now right. Search Cleveland, Ohio again. All right. And then now go straight into the filter. Now, traditionally, okay. James and I would have chosen a list, but here's what I mean where you don't have to choose in a list. I want you guys to start looking at us as a buffet of data. 
right? Because when you go to a McDonald's, when you go to one of these chain restaurants, you have to choose what they're offering you. When you've got 10 numbers, you got to choose. You can't deviate from that. Sure, you can supersize it and you can make it smaller. You can add you know, no salt, whatever. That's just the additional filters these, most of these companies are giving you, right? But you still have to choose a list, choose that number, and then slightly tweak it. We're not doing that anymore. Our system is a buffet. It's like going to Vegas. If you want to start with a soft serve ice cream, have fun. No one's going to stop you. So what we're doing right here right now is we're searching Cleveland, but instead of choosing a list, we're going to leave that blank. And what I want you to do now, James, is on the left-hand side, let's just build a problem. And here's a problem that I saw someone do that I thought was extremely amazing. They went into property characteristics. So go ahead and click on that blue property characteristics there. And then what they did was they did bedrooms, a minimum of three. Okay. And bathrooms, a maximum of one. And then right above that, they went to property type and chose single family properties. Property type, single family. Okay. There you go. The next thing they did is they closed out of the property characteristics. So again, we did max, a minimum three bedrooms or more. And then for bathrooms, we did max one bathroom or less. Correct. All right. You just want me to hit close. It'll save. Um, actually, before we do that, go to the ownership info next. Oh, okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look for someone who's lived in this house for, let's say, seven years or more. So we'll do minimum years of ownership, seven years or more. Are you choosing seven because uh, based on the national average, that is when most homes are bought and sold? Yeah, I mean, you could use any number, but seven, you're right. Typically is when people change, you know, want to either upgrade or downgrade. But it also means that there's been seven years of payments. So that means there's some level of equity there. And if we use, uh, again, the, 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 the three, uh, 30 years is the average of a mortgage. Seven means that they're about a, a 25% paid, at, I would say at least, right? So that's just kind of a safe number. But I've seen people use 10, 15. It's what we call the Goldilocks number. You guys will know eventually what, what works best in your market. It could be seven. Heck, it could be like a, a military environment. Maybe two years is sufficient enough. But That's you definitely want point. to make sure uh, you're putting that minimum. Again, I usually like to put a minimum for two reasons. Uh, because if your strategy requires equity, then you definitely want to put minimum, right? Because if you're looking for but someone who, let's say, has a lien and they just bought it last year, great, they have a lien, but there's probably no equity for you to implement your wholesale strategy. Now, maybe a sub two or a lease option might work. But if we're talking the majority of uh, strategies out there, most of them are going to require equity. So years of ownership is just kind of reverse engineering it. Someone's been there for seven years or more. That means seven years of payments or more at least. Okay, cool. Do you want to do a max or just leaving it at seven? Let's do seven minimum and we'll leave max alone. All right. And then for, for owner type, let's do individual. And so you're eliminating uh, like LLC ownership and uh, things of that nature. Okay. That's it. And we can really stop here. Now there's more we can do. We can add a pre-foreclosure record to it. We can specify equity and all that. But this is my point, right? We didn't choose a list. Like we didn't choose vacant. We didn't choose liens. We didn't choose high equity. We didn't do any of that. What James and I just did is we went into Cleveland and said, hey, we want to find all the properties with three bedrooms and one bathroom. The reason why I'm showing you this is I dealt with an investor or actually a realtor in North Carolina, and she called this her double listing list. I didn't get it. I was like, why, why are you calling your double listing list? Well, she said that she would call these homeowners that are in three bedrooms with one bathroom, and she would talk to them about upgrading. Hey, have you considered upgrading? I see you've lived in this house for three, seven years, 10 years or more. Have you considered upgrading? I'm sure your kids are a lot older now, right? Hogging up that one bathroom might be annoying. So she would talk to these homeowners about listing their property and upgrading it, and she would get that listing. So Here's a homeowner who wants to upgrade. They let her list her, their house for her. So she has a 3-1 listing. You know what she did with that listing, James? She gave it to her buyers, the buyers that she's been working with. She called her buyer right away and said, hey, guys, I got a 3-1 listed, 1,200 square footage or more. So you can put in a second bathroom in there. So the buyers would get it right off her, her case right away. Then they would rehab it. It takes three to four months. So they would put in that second bathroom, redo the kitchen, the tiles, whatever it may be, the paint. And then who do you think they're going to call to get it listed for them after? <laughs> That's why she called it the double listing list. And I, I didn't get it at first, but then when she started painting that picture, I was like, that makes sense. You're getting someone with a three, two, you're helping them with their situation. And then your three, two gets promoted to your buyers. They're going to rehab it. And then it goes back in your pocket to live. You got 3% on the first sale. You got 3% on the second sale. That yeah. to me was just mind-blowing and that's this philosophy here is that we didn't choose a list 
she saw our filters as, man, this is a buffet. I can go in here and say, I want an out-of-state owner with three mortgages. I want this and that. I want, and you don't ever have to choose a list. Now, granted, first start with a list because that's always been the traditional start with a list. But as you get more familiar with, hey, this industry is all about finding problems, our filters are designed for that method. And if you're the person and like that's the particular problem you want to solve, the amount of data available to you is ridiculous. Here we have uh, 52,875 hits. And of course, if that, if you if you're if you're wanting to go balls to the wall go big you got 52,875 leads to work with but if you're a little bit small time and you can't afford to market to that many people you could then go in and create more uh, yeah, layers to equity. this to narrow down your mm -hmm. uh, your pyramid there absolutely so that's I want you guys to, at the end of the day look at not just you know I mean our platform in that manner like hey yeah they have 18 categories great starting point but remember we've been in this industry for 15 years. It's, it was never about a list. The list was because that was all that you had to work with before technology. Now, what we've done is again, we're a repository. 15 years, we've just been stacking this information into our server and now you can dissect that. And I mean, right now, go, let's go ahead and hit reset and let's like come up with other problems. Like right now, um, uh, I, saw, I saw something earlier that made me laugh. Someone went into our system and again, President Joe, elect, uh, Joe Biden just said evictions are going to be ex uh, expanded a little bit more. So I saw someone recently do this search, went okay. into, let's say, Cleveland, Ohio in our filters. And what he did was non-owner occupied. Let me uh, start over real quick. Yeah, I gotta... so clear all. All right. And, and then, then filter. Yeah, okay. So you want non-owner occupied? Correct. Yeah. And then owner uh, occupancy status occupied. So he was hunting down the landlords, okay? But then here's what he did after that. He went to uh, property characteristics, made sure it was a single family property. Property characteristics? Yeah, he's not, he's not one of those guys who's interested in condos or things of that no, nature. No, no, he just wanted single family properties only. And commercial, because guys, uh, your tenants, right? The eviction moratorium, yes, it will prevent you from evicting your tenants who live there. But you know, if you're a uh, Joe Blow auto mechanic and you ain't paying your rent, Sorry, dog. <laughs> that doesn't apply. Yeah, exactly. You so after, after property characteristics, uh, he went into the MLS status. Okay. And just made sure it was off market. So you didn't have to deal with an agent or any of that. So if you click on MLS status, it should be the second one to the right. It's Which like is pretty awesome about that too, Burton. Because like, I know just from my audience, like I got uh, you guys, you guys do the MLS search and analysis show with, uh, with me, right? And you guys love that show. Uh, but a lot of you sometimes you want to dig deeper and you want to target off market stuff. Right. But that's, it's the MLS search and analysis show guys. So the properties, <laughs> the properties are on the MLS. I'm searching and analyzing properties on the MLS. So for all you cats out there who are like, Hey man, how do I work the MLS search and analysis show with properties off the MLS? There you go. Your answer has been uh, provided by Bert. <laughs> and then the last two filters this gentleman used, I thought it was clever. He went into the ownership info area and right. made sure it was an individual. So he did that and added his years of ownership, whatever that, that Goldilocks number is. Let's do about. on this one. Let's go four. reason I want to go four is Love because uh, nationwide guys, owner occupied properties trade roughly every seven years, non-owner occupied properties, they trade roughly every four years. So we'll put four in the minimum there. And then for max, you can leave it blank or put a cap on there. Okay. Let's go four, but four. But as you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a, a drop down menu that says uh, owner location. Do you see that? Um, it should be in the ownership info filter, should be the last one. Um, like one of the last few options there should say location absentee owner. owner location. Yes, yeah. So okay. there you're going to click on it. And what we're going to do is out of state. Ah, oh, okay. All right. And then finally, Go to the very, uh, close out the ownership info and go to the last filter option that says mortgage info. Okay. And in the very first drop down, that's numbers of mortgages. I want you to click on the number one. Okay. And that's it. Because you don't want somebody who's mortgaged to the gill. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. So what we're, we just created, again, we didn't choose a list, but what we just created, if we look at the summary, which is that like dark, dark light blue, dark blue area, top right, we just built a landlord list right so these are non-owner occupied properties with a tenant with four years of ownership individually owned and that individual is in a different state right now and they have a mortgage on that rental property that's just red flags everywhere because 
A, nobody's traveling right now unless they have a vaccine, right? Because COVID <laughs> traveling is, is just completely to a halt. So if any of these homeowners right here is renting to a property and the phone that their tenant's phone stops, you know, doesn't go through anymore, it's disconnected. What are you going to do? You're going to just fly to Cleveland, Ohio and figure it out? That ain't happening, right? The second issue, the second red flag is there's a mortgage existing on these rental properties. So, hey, before COVID, before 2020, right? We would have never talked to these people. We would have left them alone. We would have been envious of them. We would have been like, man, you're cash flowing a property. That's awesome. You must be making passive income, right? But then March 2020 hit, 40 million people filed for unemployment. That means these guys were impacted. Now, not every one of them is going to be in a bad situation, but I'm sure, how many results do we have there, James? On this the one, uh, as we narrowed it down, like our last problem you solved, right? 52,000, something like that. That's, that's a great if you're a big dog, but if you're just getting started, you probably don't have that kind of budget. So you could narrow things down. And this new problem that we have solved uh, hits you with a very manageable number, 550. It's enough to get volume, but folks on a budget can get started. So there are 550 out-of-state landlords renting in Cleveland right now with a mortgage on that property. And if that tenant is not paying and, or hasn't been paying since March of 2020, who do you think is paying that bill? That landlord is, right? So the conversation here is we can call and say, hey, how are things going with your rental property? And just shut up. Let them tell us whether their tenant's paying the rent. Let them tell us whether that mortgage is not being paid. Let them tell us whether they had to go into for low because the tenant's not paying, right? Let them tell us whether, hey, I haven't spoken to our tenant since November. They haven't been answering, right? This is what I, I'm, I'm campaigning, guys, is that there are problems out there, lots of problems out there that aren't on a vacant list, that aren't on a lien list, that aren't on a pre-foreclosure list. And this is a prime example. We went into our filters and just built the problem. Out-of-state owners that are renting properties with a mortgage. Yeah, 2019, we would have left alone. But now with you know, a lot of people not paying rent, these guys are prime targets uh, for not just investors, lenders, bankers, and so forth. So I hope this kind of turned on a light bulb a little bit. <laughs> Dude. Bravo, man. I am team prop stream all the way, dude. This is, uh, this is a gnarly uh, system you've put together. Uh, I'll tell you all this right now. I'm talking to you guys now. It will not turn you from Joe Blow wannabe investor to a multimillionaire real estate investor just if you buy it, okay? What he has provided you guys is a lot of tools uh, to put in your tool belt. It's up to you to utilize those tools, man. A drill is an awesome tool unless you need a hammer and a nail, then it's not gonna do anything for you. But if you are serious about growing your business, you are serious about investing, uh, dude, this is like, you've put together like the Swiss army knife uh, of products. Dude, I'm very impressed. I actually was going into this, assuming we were gonna solve one or two problems and, and you really ended up solving like 10 of them, uh, which is pretty ridiculous. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. And the cost is, it's, it's pretty negligible, right? I mean, dude, if you're going to be in business, y'all, you got to pay to play. What's the cost on this again? Well, it's normally $99 a month, but we'll okay. give you a seven day trial and there's no yearly contracts, but here, we, James is such a damn good negotiator guys. Like literally, I, I kid you not. He's a good negotiator. James, just drop the link on him. We had to hook James up with a discount. <laughs> so you guys, if you sign up with link, uh, James's link that he'll provide you guys, um, it's actually going to be $97 for him. I know it's not too much, but it all adds up. Uh, and that, you know, $2 saving over time. Hey, let's put it towards the skip tracing. Let's put it towards those postcards. But James, make sure you click on his link um, for giving us the opportunity to share this amazing tool on his platform. But make sure you guys give him credit for that as well. Uh, but it's $97 a month for if you click on James' link and sign up today. I mean, there's no, again, yearly contract, 97 a month, 10,000 records, build problems. You guys should definitely have more than enough leads out there for your market. Perfect. All right, Bert, man. Thank you and the properties or the prop stream team for coming on folks. Like he said, link below, it's in the show notes below. Click on that. It's a $97 a month with the discount they have given us. Uh, no annual contract, right? So it's not like your Verizon phone or your AT&T phone. Man, I've been dropping a lot of names of companies. I'm not trying to attack people today, guys. I'm <laughs> just trying to be relevant to you. It's not like your cell phone or your cable provider or your two-year contract, right? Try it out. But, folks, I will say this. They are not holding you into this contract. That's great. But, dudes, don't try to do this if you – are going to want to determine if your business is a success or a failure after 60 days or 90 days, guys. 
I'm just telling you as a experienced operator, experienced investor, you have to put the time in. You have to take those licks. You have to get on the phones. You have to get told no. You have to get told to fuck yourself. And you have to put in time and let this stuff pay off, right? You don't get to just make one call in your first mailing and bang, you're a fancy real estate investor. Now you got your own little show or something like that, right? It's not how it works. It takes a lot of time to develop these businesses. Business ownership, real estate investing, guys, it's a lot of behind the scene grind of doing the same stuff over and over and over and over again in beating out your competition with that follow-up. Because again, my boy Burton, he wants all of you to buy this. Every one of you. He wants every one of you to buy this. But here is the thing, guys. In the United States of America, the majority of businesses that are started do not succeed. So if you're one of the small percentile that stick with it, you absolutely will rise above the pack, folks. Okay. So it's all about that follow up. All those other people that are interested in it, you got to be the guy that gets in front of those customers, those motivated sellers, seven, eight, nine times, because the dude who only does it once or twice, they're going to be forgot about. Remember, folks, they still advertise milk. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.